Okay, so let's talk about the fact that there is some natural variation in data, meaning that if you were to sample a group of some um, 20 men and knowing that their average weight is 172, um, there's variation. There will be some men that have weights of 173, some 175, 190, 210, some men that have weights of 150 and 140. So there's variation in that group of, of men around the mean. Um, so it's hard not to talk about variation unless we're talking about variation from a mean. Um, so in your um, my lab um, login, we have something called StatCrunch. And so I want to use StatCrunch to help us think about variation. Um, so let's go ahead and visit the StatCrunch website. So um, from your MyLab login, you should see this um, option here. Once you go here, I want you to um, upload some data. The data that I want you to upload, you probably don't see at this point. Um, and so uh, meaning that it's um, the data that I want you to upload is going to come from Google Drive. So on Google Drive, on our shared Google Drive, there is a link at the, let's see, let's go here to Math 119. There's a link called mhealth.xls. So that stands for men's health. Um, so what's the quickest way to get to that link? So what's the quickest way to get to this Google Drive um, folder? If you go back to your syllabus, um, over there I shared with you that there's a link gwo.gl j3e5ll when you go to that link, you might want to make note of it now, when you go to that link you'll be taken to where um, we are right now. So in there you'll see men's health and so what you can do is download that file and put it onto maybe your desktop or someplace where you can easily find it. So right now I have it on to my desktop. Um, so let me click on show and folder and there it is I have men's health now that I have it here I can drag it in and I have this data where I have um, the particular male identified by a number as well as that male's age height weight um, waist measurements pulse rates um, pulse rate we can see here and so um, I'll go ahead and just simply leave everything as is. It asks, do I want to take the first row as the name of the column? So my first row is not just numbers. My first row is indeed the name of the column. It's not data, right, um, in the way that it's not just simply another number. So if I just simply had these values, the 58, 70.8, without any type of label, then I'd have to um, look at things a bit differently. So let's go ahead and upload it. So now that I have this data, um, I have the identifiers for the men. I have the age, the height, the weight, and the waist. What I want to do is look at, um, we're going to focus on the, uh, the weight of these men. Um, notice at the bottom here we have some other information that 
helps us understand what these numbers represent. It says the age is in years, the height is in inches, um, the weight is in pounds, and so forth. And we also have pulse rate, and so forth. So I don't need this. In, in fact, it may corrupt some of my calculations. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And let's just, again, focus on weight. Um, so what is the average weight? And how many men are there here? It looks like there are 40. Um, so I'm going to use StatCrunch to help us look at these numbers. Um, so summary statistics is good because it gives several different parameters um, for any given column or a given row. So let's go ahead and use under stats, summary stats, let's select a column and over here notice that there is um, the same uh, rows, uh, the same row labels that we saw before so it helps us select which one of the columns we're interested in so I'll select um, weight. Um, as far as what it's going to give us it'll give us the mean, the standard error, standard deviation, um, range, min max and so forth. Um, we'll get to standard error in a later video but we can talk about standard deviation, mean, and variance. We've seen some of that. So let's go ahead and explore it. Um, if we go to, let's see, under stats, summary stats, columns, we're going to choose to look at the weight. Um, and I won't do anything else other than just simply choose weight. I'll, um, we will be given the number of individuals in that column, the mean, the variance, um, and I'm not even going to um, look to have that information stored in a data table. I just simply want to get the summary statistics on that column. And if you look at this, what we see is that, um, that the mean weight is 172.55. So 172.55 pounds and the variance 693 and the standard deviation which is the square root of that is 26 pounds. So if this table, right, if this column of, high, of weights is a normal distribution, the majority of the weights are going to be 172 pounds plus or minus 26. Um, so that's what you can expect. So let's say it's somewhere between 150 and um, one, almost 200. 150 to 200 is where you'd expect 68%. Um, one standard deviation is what that is, is where you'd expect 68% of the, the men's weights to, to reside. So there is variation, and that variation in the weights um, is about this mean of 172. So let's go ahead and capture that right here. And then we'll go ahead and save it. Um, so we have Um, a mean of 172 pounds, roughly point, so 172.6, plus a standard deviation of 26.3, um, plus or minus 26.3, about that mean. Now, um, let's say that we can't get access to all, um, how many men were there? Looks like 40. Um, right, 1 through 40. So if we can't access all of those men, um, let's say we can only sample some of them, but we're really trying to figure out what the weight is for the entire population. Um, so there is a tool here in StatCrunch that's going to help us um, explore that via, via sampling. 
So um, again, we want a sample. So let's go under data. We'll click on sample. All right, there are 40 men here. That, uh, and we have these 40 different weights. For some reason, I can't get into the entire population. So let's say that I can only access oh, 10 men at any given time. So given that we can only access 10 men at any given time, um, we're going to randomly go in and sample from the 40, um, uh, 10 men to see what their um, what their statistics are. So let's go ahead and do that. And so we'll keep this simple and we won't change anything else other than the sample size. And let's say let's go ahead and do this three times. We're going to just put these 40 names in a hat, grab 10. And then put the 40 names in a hat and grab 10 again. Put those 40 names in a hat and grab 10. So that's what this is doing. We're going to do this three times. And what we'll do also is put this into a new table. So here we have 10 different weights, 10 more weights, and 10 more weights. So what I want to know is, given that we know that um, the pop if that is the population of size 40, and we know that they have a mean weight of 172, how good are these smaller samples? Um, how good of an approximation are these sample weights to um, the actual population of n, n equal to 40. Um, so I can get um, means on each one of those because what we're interested in is the population mean. Um, but assuming we can't get to the 40 but we can only get to the 10, let's see if we can um, go ahead and get the summary statistics on the first column. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I won't change anything here. So there's the first column and it looks like the mean is 162. Let's do this again. We're going to get the summary stats on the second column. And then I'll get the summary stats on the third column. Um, so we have three different means that we came up with. So not only is there variation um, in our original data set here, right? Not only is there variation about the mean, um, each one of these guys has variation um, and each one of these will have variation about um, the mean of these three right so by that I mean let's go ahead and take the ones let's look at the 166 is it an approximation is it close to 172 yeah is this an approximation to the 172.55? Yes, as is the 180.16. So if we take the 166.52 and the 172.01 and the 180.16 and go ahead and get the mean of those three, um, We get a 172.9. Um, so although each one of these um, individually is not necessarily perfectly close to the true population mean, collectively um, they 
do a pretty good job of approximating the actual population mean. Um, but what if we were to sample 10 more, 10 more, 10 more, and put all of these, um, distribute them to these, these values here, right? These, um, the mean of the samples, right? If we put the mean of these samples into a histogram, what would that look like? So that's the next conversation. If we were to put the mean of the samples into a distribution, what would that look like? Would it look like the exact same distribution that we have here?